I can make all of the college day in my life videos, get ready with me, tips and tricks videos, and any other content that creators in my niche do. But the fact of the matter is, is that in all actuality, this will probably be my most important video that goes up on my channel ever. Let's talk about the diversity in the STEM field or the lack thereof. So let me rephrase that. Let's talk about the lack of diversity in the STEM field and how it has impacted me, a black woman at a predominantly white institution over the past three and a half years. Just a quick disclaimer before we go forward, this is only meant to bring to surface some of the challenges that minorities face in the STEM field. This is also not a video made to bash anybody, anything. So first, let's address these numbers because these numbers are hideous, horrendous. Listen, get into this according to the nsf the stem workplace is 89 percent white and 72 percent male while the overall workforce is 78 percent white and 53 percent male i need y'all to get into this okay and right now in the u.s there are currently more non-white children than white children and nearly half of all children born are female so as y'all can hear from these statistics stem fields do not reflect this diversity as a lot of you know a lot of stem fields pay well there's not enough minorities benefiting from that not enough at all so let's move into some numbers on minorities in the stem workplace black people make up 11 percent of the total u.s workforce but represent just nine percent of stem workers while hispanic people comprise 16 percent of the U.S. workforce, but only 7% of STEM workers. And among employed with a bachelor degree or higher, Black people are 7% and Hispanics are 6% of the STEM workforce. So as y'all hear from the numbers, Black people, Hispanic people are not making up very much of the STEM field. Women over time have kind of made a presence in STEM, but minorities are suffering. There's still a great imbalance. It needs to be addressed. Let's talk about it, shall we? So the purpose of this video is to describe to you guys the disparity between these numbers through the lens of my college experience. So basically what I've faced to get here, what women of colors, more specifically black women face in the STEM field to succeed. I just want to shine a little bit of light on the struggles that we go through in order to basically get a seat at the table. It takes years of hard work, dedication, long nights on top of fighting with people who think we don't deserve to be there to actually succeed. So I'm just going to walk through my experience just show you guys some of the obstacles i've been through and how i've been able to prevail through each of those hopefully the things that i see in this video inspire anybody out there who is really leaning towards stem but is fearful of the obstacles that they might face or fearful of failing i, I really hope that this encourages somebody to kind of push forth in the direction of their dreams fearlessly so without further ado Here's my story. So from a young age, the importance of STEM was stressed heavily. Growing up, I was placed in pre-college STEM programs year round that helped me develop that interest in STEM from a very early age. They explained to me how needed black women were in this field and how capable I would be of succeeding in this field as long as I put my best foot forward. So I was sold on it from a very young age. Through my elementary, middle and high school experience, I faced quite a bit of adversity that caused me to waver in my belief of whether or not I could actually do this whole STEM thing. But with the support system I had, I managed to persevere and ultimately land at one of my top schools to pursue engineering. We're moving on to my college experience. Getting into UMich was one of my greatest accomplishments, but it was just the beginning of my long journey to obtaining that degree in my STEM field of choice. So freshman year, I met this chick called imposter syndrome, okay? She's a nobody. I don't like her. I have beef with her. And imposter syndrome tried to make me feel as though I did not belong at the university. Keep in mind that freshman year was the class year where you take mainly reader classes. I struggled feeling as though I really belonged in my field and I really wasn't even in the field yet. I really hadn't even declared my major. I hadn't really even broke the surface on what my major really even was. And a lot of people get discouraged at this point, at this freshman year point where these weeder classes are pushing them out of their major that they desire, pushing them ultimately into another school, into another major, just redirecting their path. But I had organizations that I was a part of that I could turn to and get the resources that I need to kind of keep myself afloat in these classes and also know that I was alone because there's a lot more people who looked like me in those organizations than what I saw in my classes on the day-to-day -day basis. It was from these organizations that I really learned how to protect my GPA at all costs. I had people
people who looked like me, who were able to pour into me, give me tips and direction on what I needed to do to succeed. But at the same time, this was the same year, my physics professor told me to drop his class because he knew I was on the path to failing his class. I regret this so much today. I was a freshman, I was scared, so I dropped the class. That took me from 16 credits to 11 credits. So I was under full time. It was a mess, right? I had to drop a lab and a class and it was a terrible feeling. It honestly made me feel defeated. Mind you, I'm now missing five credits from my schedule. So that puts me back a whole semester from graduation. That was by far the worst semester I had at the university thus far. And I hate that I listened to that professor. I hate that I let him think that I would fail. Now looking back at it, I was like, Court, you would, you would have passed. Why did you... Why did you drop that, right? But hindsight is always twenty twenty, huh? Anyways, back on track. So that summer, I went to Hong Kong to take Calc 4 in an attempt to catch myself up and graduate on time. Moral of the story is, I came back, I was still behind. Sophomore year comes around, I'm finally out of those weirder classes. I made it, right? So now I'm, I'm getting into the nitty gritty. I'm getting into the classes of my major, right? Material science classes, here we come. Not so fast, right? I get into those classes. I see very early on that there's nobody else in that class that looks like me. Mind you, the weirder classes that I took freshman year, those classes were huge. I saw maybe one to two other black people per class, but now I'm in my major and I see that I'm the only one in my major's graduating class and I am scared. This is where old girl imposter syndrome came back with a vengeance, right? Sis really tried to throw me off my game. I would literally sit in classes and not talk to anybody. And whenever the professor would be like, oh, turn to your neighbor and talk about this problem. I always dreaded that because one, nobody ever turned to me. Nobody talked to me. <laughs> I was just like, I was just that one black girl in the class. Nobody talked to me. On the rare occasion that somebody did wibble toward me, it was always like a quick exchange. It was like, did you get this? And I was like, yeah. I was like, did you get this? And they was like, yeah. So we turned back to our respective places, then talk again. That's literally how my sophomore year went. So I just got to the point where I just wanted to keep to myself. I got to the point where when the professor asked us to turn to people, I didn't even move. I didn't want to move because it was just like, nobody want to talk to me anyway. Don't feel bad for me. <laughs> Because I was chilling, but at the same time, I was like, dang, I really wish I could talk to somebody in here, but it's like, really can't. Everybody had quickly formed their groups, and I was just there chilling. Ultimately, I just tried to remain unproblematic and stay out of the way. As the only black woman in my major, it's kind of easy to tell who I am. Everybody knew who I was, even though no one talked to me really like that. So I just kind of stayed ducked off. If I had a question, I asked the professor. That's pretty much how my sophomore year looked. And it was, again, thanks to my amazing organizations that kept me afloat my sophomore year. And I met some of my really good college friends in those orgs who were experiencing very similar things as me. So during the summer after my sophomore experience, I worked my very first internship, which was a very eye-opening experience for me in terms of engineering. But more importantly, it's where I met a very special mentor who I still hold very close to my heart. I will never forget her. This woman is a black engineer, a full-time employee at the company. She saw the struggle that I was going through during my internship and took me in. I'm not gonna name those exact struggles, but just know it wasn't your ideal internship, right? She showed me the ropes within the company, taught me how to make connections and network, and she gave me meaningful projects to work on when I had none. She wasn't even my manager and she was the reason why I had projects. For her to take me in and be so selfless, I can't thank her enough for that. Because of that summer, so many doors have been open for me. I wouldn't be who I am today without her and without that experience. And I say all this to say, it's really important to have those mentors and those role models who look like you, pouring into you and showing you the way in these settings that initially weren't even made for you to excel in. My good sis, if you're watching this, you know who you are. Thank you so much. But let's move into junior year. So junior year, this was flat out the hardest school year in my life, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. Academically, that year was hard. But at this point, I was a little bit more secure in myself. But in the midst of it, you know, there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of fear, pressure, a lot of stuff that I had to talk to Jesus about, y'all. It's a lot of, mm, a lot of self-work. This was during the time that I met one of my very best undergrad friends. Her name is Angelica. Y'all have seen her in quite a few videos. She is also studying material science and engineering. She has played a very instrumental role in keeping me in this major. By this time, I also had made a few friends within the major. I started meeting other people when I went to office hours. And these are just friends I worked on homework with, projects, and that really helped me tremendously. Like every year though, this year had its ups and downs too. So this specific year, I was in a few labs lab groups that were predominantly male. In that group, I was not called on to do a lot of the bench work or lab work for my group. I felt like I should have advocated for myself a little bit more. Should have fought to prove myself in that setting. If you are a minority, you're a woman, if you're a black woman in this setting, it gets tiring 
trying to fight for your seat at the table in every setting that you're in. And at this point in time, I was just tired. It was my junior year, it was enough going on, and I just wanted to pass the class at this point. I didn't make a fuss about not being able to do as much lab work. I was like, okay, cool. Regretfully, I grew to accept this role in a lab setting, and this almost became instinctive when I got in lab groups, and I've been in plenty, which has caused me to get to the place where lab is not my strong suit, and I'm not very fond of it at all i think i could have been really good at lab but now i'm at the end of my college career and it's like i never really gave myself that chance because i didn't choose to advocate for myself and i took that back seat i'm currently working on changing that i don't want to let that hold me back from reaching my fullest potential in all aspects yes it can get tiring advocating for yourself in every setting every situation but sometimes it's needed you can't always take that back seat learn from me okay and I also didn't want that to limit me as far as like how far I could go in my career. So just working on that and becoming stronger in lab is what I'm doing right now. The second half of my junior year is when I secured my internship with Nike. It was a big motivator for me to kind of like apply more pressure and to realize how much I was capable of and how much I really needed to believe in myself. Fast forward to now, I'm in my second semester of my senior year. Looking back, there's a lot of things that could have made me drop this major, but I am so grateful to have endured the hardest parts it's because it has honestly made me who I am today. Without that struggle, I wouldn't have the grit, the tenacity, the determination that I have today. And I'm making this video to tell anybody who is struggling with the same things I struggle with. Like, don't sleep on your abilities. Don't let somebody tell you what you can and cannot do. It all starts with you. Put some respect on your own name and the rest will follow. I'm sharing my stories of struggle so that y'all can learn from me and so that y'all don't have to struggle because I don't want you guys to struggle like I did. Ultimately, I just wanted to share my story as a black woman in the STEM field and some of the things that we face uh, being black in this field. There's some things that I didn't necessarily highlight, but I believe that y'all get the gist. But the fact of the matter is, is that work needs to be done to increase the amount of diversity in the STEM field. If you're someone who's watching this and you're currently debating going into STEM, know that we need you. The kids behind you need you. You're making a bigger difference than you know by betting on yourself, proving those fears wrong. Yes, you're going to have obstacles along the way. We all do. You have communities who are here to support you through everything because without my community without my the people in my corner i wouldn't have made it so just know you have people waiting on you waiting on you to take that chance on yourself so i just say go for it but i ain't gonna hold y'all okay with that don't forget to comment like and subscribe to my channel for more content i will see y'all in the next one peace